right, everybody. Uh, my name is Kevin Steverson. I am the creator and founder of the Salvage Title Universe. Um, we have 12 books now in the universe, and of course, more than a handful are being written. Some have been turned in to the uh, to the factory box, Chris Candy Publishing. Um, it all started with the book Salvage Title, uh, and then followed with Salvage Fleet and Salvage System. Salvage Title was the first thing I've ever had published. I didn't have a short story published or, or a book published. And uh, the first publisher I came to was Chris Kennedy, and he liked it and, and wanted it. And a couple weeks into it, uh, going live on Amazon, it was ranked 640 on all of Amazon. So um, I guess I am the unicorn. It's not supposed to happen that way. A lot of the authors here have, have, have written stuff for years and turned stuff in, and it's not supposed to happen that way. Um, so some of the things I might say or tell you is, is going to be uh, do what I say, not what I do, uh, because... You know, I don't do beta readers either. And so I write it, I go over it, and I turn it in. Um, and, and, you know, a lot of people do beta readers, and there's nothing wrong with it. It's probably the smart way to do it. But I never once claimed to be smart, so that's, that's there. Um, <laughs> well, you are Army, so we got to look that over a little bit. Uh, there we go. <laughs> but um, it didn't take long. The Salvage Title Trilogy and, and the Salvage Universe, it has a movie deal now. Um, the option was picked up by a hideout pictures and it's not unusual for books to get an option. I mean, that happens a lot. And then, you know, the, and then whoever's doing the option scrambles, trying to find directors and, and people to get involved with the movie. Um, I talked to the CEO of the production company. They've gone through two drafts of the script. It is in pre-production and they think urban's going to be the one and then they'll have the final script and then it's going to go from there. So in his exact words, it's happening. We're making a movie. That's so that's cool. happening with salvage. Congrats. Um, Hell yeah. That's awesome, dude. That's awesome. Um, once again, I am the unicorn. Apparently people 30 years, 40 years trying to get movies. And just one of those things. I mean, anything could happen between now and then, but as, as far as, uh, as far as the production company and everything else, it's, it's going to happen. Um, they do a lot of, uh, a lot of different kind of movies. They just wrapped up filming some Westerns, you know, with Trace Atkins and some other people. So um, they're doing things. They're moving things. Here on the panel, we got some of the authors that have uh, novels, and some of them have short stories, and some of them are going to become novels. Um, so we just we just go ahead and go, uh, and it really doesn't matter what order we go in. Uh, William Joseph Roberts, uh, he and Chris Chris Woods had a book that came out recently. You want to go ahead and tell everybody about your book? <laughs> He's got his hand. I had one ready. I got props, man. I got props. And and okay. Anybody that is a fan of cheesy B-rate science fiction should recognize what that is. And if you don't, something's wrong. <laughs> you want to start, Chris? You want me to do? It? Uh, I can start, I guess. Uh, my character in the book is named Rip Torn, and he's got a few problems. He's, uh, he's hooked on gambling a little bit, and he's hooked on women a little bit more. And... Uh, well, he, he just has a lot of problems with that. And after uh, losing his ship in a card game, he goes looking for a captain to uh, so he can deliver a cargo, and he runs into a certain fellow named Van Hagar, who has an obsession with the 1980s, 8,000 years later. And, uh, well, Van Hagar should explain itself right there. And the the book the book follows their misadventures through uh, well through the rest of it. <laughs> they were all misadventures though. Describe your uh, Van Hagar. Well, when we started writing this, and it, it started by Chris had sent me the first chapter. And we were just going to bounce back and forth and try to do something together for the salvage uh, well, through the gate anthology, which is where Sidekicks started out, which became Smuggler's Run. Um, and as I started writing this character, all I could picture was Sean William Scott in the mullet with the denim jacket and the ostrich skin boots and like, OK, cool, we're writing this. And the next thing you know, he's like totally into the 80s and everything else. Like, wait, this is like 3000 years in the future. Okay, I know how we can explain this one. He went hunting down humanity, and well, me and Chris ended up like, uh, what was it? He, he, uh, 
he was raised by aliens and when he went to find out where humans came from he started going down through all the eras of, of earth and humanity and then he found the 80s and he fell in love with the music and the clothing and everything that was the 80s so we ended up with like the parody in the salvage universe <laughs> now and, and the cool thing um I have filed for an official Guinness Book of World Records title on Smuggler's Run for the most um, the most pop culture references in a science fiction novel. <laughs> oh, you get it. Yeah, they, they mentioned it's it's eight thousand years in the future, um, and mankind has spread throughout the galaxy so far and so wide. There's no human coalition um, in the Tertain system where where. Uh, the main characters in the first novels, Harmon, uh, and who it came from. That thing has been <laughs> colonized for 2,000 years, and it came from somewhere that came from somewhere that came from somewhere, and they could trace it back to Earth. But it wasn't an Earth colony, and it's just, it's you know, 8,000 years from now, it's just so far and wide like that. So there are people who study history and, and human history. Clip's a historian. He likes to say some of that stuff, but he's more into the food and that kind of thing, whereas your character's into the music. So, yeah. Um, Alex, talk a little bit about your, your book. Uh, yeah, I, I started my journey in salvage. Actually, I met Kevin at Fantasy uh, a couple of years ago, the first Fantasy, I think it was. And, um, and we talked about it, about uh, the fact that he might do an anthology. I said, well, you know, if you do, let me know. He did, and I did. Um, so I sent in Death of a Traitor, <laughs> which uh, I, for some weird stupid reason i challenged myself with this story and made the main character species snakes in space um i i honestly don't know why i did that but <laughs> i wanted to challenge that i did it um and then uh, i think it was about four hours after i submitted it uh, kevin and chris reached out to me and said when's the novel <laughs> so uh Thus was born Scales of Justice, the first full novel I did uh, in the Salvage Universe, which uh, you know follows the Serpentis, my my snake species, which live on a planet with humans, um, and they meet other planets of humans, and I introduce another system and another race, um, and and it just kind of goes from there. It's it's less on the humor side probably than a lot of the other Salvage books, and more. A, a very serious track there's there's humor mixed into it at moments but it, it's much more of a serious track i think which i enjoyed writing it and apparently people enjoyed it because they wanted more so um i have turned in uh shutting the past which is coming out july 16th um i think that's the next salvage book right, to come out um, but Shedding the Past will be out July 16th. It'll continue following the Serpentis and uh, the folks on Gilev and Nevison and maybe introduce one or two other systems. And it'll also be the first time that the uh, fans will get to see an interaction between Clip, Harman, Tomril, and the Serpentis. So there is interaction between Salvage System and Serpentis in this book. So it's it's I think it's going to be fun. Awesome. Uh, David, do you want to talk a little bit about your novel? Sure. Um, I got started pretty much the same way. I got invited to do the, uh, the anthology. And uh, the short story that I wrote um, was about, because this is so far in the future, it was about a, a group of slave humans that had been enslaved by fellow humans. So they they didn't see each other as pretty much the same because there was so much time that had gone by, and uh, the enslaved humans. One of them had a uh, this is a long story. This is a science fiction story. It's always good. You always try to describe it. And you're like, oh, this is really stupid. But it had it had a character in it that. Um, he had an AI that was implanted in his brain because the AI was trying to save his people from slavery. And he was trying to tell everyone, hey, you're not supposed to be slaves. Cutting in and out a little bit uh, there. I turned that short story. What's that? It seemed to be cutting in and out a little bit. You guys catching that? Is it cutting out on y'all? Just me. It's cutting out on no, you. Nice, nice. Everybody. Let's see. 
Uh-oh. Are you able to understand me? It's really choppy. It's real choppy. Much. Are you on? Okay, he, he can he can edit it if we need to start over with your part, but he can edit that part out. But um, I don't know what what can we do to make it a little clearer. See if I shut off my camera, that makes a difference. Yeah, that should make a difference. Go ahead and talk. Is that better? Still clicky. Talk a little bit. Is can you hear me now? Do you have? Is there somebody streaming on something in your house? Are you on Wi-Fi? Yeah, Wi-Fi, I do uh, it, too. It's possible. I have three kids. Yeah, if they're streaming something, you get them to shut that off, you'll be all right. Yeah. Yeah, right, let me get, get let all me of ours to shut everything down. <laughs> hey, Quincy, when would yeah. be good for you to do the uh, biker bar one? Pardon? The uh, biker bar panel? Uh... When do you need? I'm free pretty much all week, pretty much. Okay. Well, it looks like evenings, uh, Tuesday, Wednesday, or Thursday is what's working so far. I haven't heard from Summer Corn yet. Can't do Tuesday. Uh, we've got a the, the or, Rob House no, project. We do that Tuesday nights. Um, no, I'm sorry. Monday, Wednesday, Thursday right now. Ah. How about Wednesday night? Wednesday or Thursday. So I'll, I'll, I'll leave those as those are allocated. Pick a day for that works for you and everybody else. Okay. Um, I'll, I'll have to get with Summer Corn. I still haven't heard from him. Okay. <clears throat> um, what, would 6 p.m. work for you? What? Where are you? Central? Eastern? Eastern. I'm in North Carolina. Charlotte. Uh, okay. <clears throat> All right. So 6 o'clock work for you, maybe? That'll work. We'll eat dinner late. Okay. So I'll get hey guys, with everybody else. Or order pizza. I just stepped aside for a second, guys, to tell my wife to shut everything off downstairs. Are we punting to another night? Or No, no. We've got, yeah. We should be able to go. I think okay. David's coming back here. All right. Cool deal. And he'll be able to edit this. So. All right. You back, David? Yeah. Sorry about that, guys. It's all right. Don't miss on of us. You play with them. It's all good. Um, okay, uh, I guess start right back where you began, and I'll do my little edit magic later on. And yeah, okay. Are you able to hear me now? Uh, we're uh, getting close. Still. Yeah, it's still clicky. Still bad, huh? Um, uh, try to shut everything off. I'm not sure why I'm doing that. Hmm. I don't know if you can come on these on cell phones, can you? On phone, smartphones. Um. um you can, but I don't know that the signal is going to be any better. Signal wouldn't be any better. Yeah. It sounds like electrical interference and Wi-Fi connection. Are the speakers, you know, are you using the yeah. speaker or using the computer speaker itself? I'm using my phone, but it's on Wi-Fi. That'll do it. Cut yeah, off your right. Wi-Fi and just use your signal. See if that's any better. Oh, you're on the phone. Okay. That's yeah. probably why. See if it sounds any better. Yeah, anytime my phone goes to Wi Fi, it's crappy. And I can shut this door. My phone is going crazy. You got your peppers in the ground yet, Kevin? I do. And I got a bottle of uh, pepper sauce for you. Are you going to be at the con, right? No, I ain't going to be fan, sir. I may just have to go and mail it to you. I had it. I had it. It's, it's set up you about 90 days now. That's me. just right. Huh? Yeah, give it to Woods. You can send it back with me. And then he's going to try it and tell you he never got it. Oh, he's a wuss. He can't I don't take like, the heat. I don't like the spicy, so you don't have to worry about me eating it. Oh, it's amazing. It makes green two of them. there, David? David. David. Hmm. I don't hear any. Can you guys it's Nick's well, fault. Beauty. He had that blowout yesterday. That's the beauty <laughs> of editing. Should we move around and come back to him, see if we can get a cleaner signal? Yeah. Yeah. Ooh. Hey, Nick, you want to go ahead and, uh, and tell us about... Uh, your, your introduction into the universe and your in your <clears throat> short story novella and books. 
Yeah, uh, so I met Kevin the day I was born, and he bossed me around ever since. Um, so this is nothing new for me. <laughs> <laughs> Some but, uh, children. <laughs> but the way I got into the universe was kind of funny. Um, I had already read everything in the universe, and I think he already had all the way up to um, hide the lightning out. So I had read uh, Alex's book, his his four books, and the anthology. And uh, so I was just sitting there thinking one night, and I thought of a, a race that I thought would be cool. You know, they were uh, dragons, but they were more of a, a Spartan warrior type feel to them. So I sent him a text message, and then he says, well, write it. And I said, well, all right then. You know, I didn't expect that. So uh, what was supposed to be a short story turned into a novella. So, you know, uh, it was the first thing I had written in 15 years or anything for that matter. Um, so I wrote that and I turned it in and he liked it. Chris liked it. Um, and so I, I turned that in and then I had to write a short story for uh, Through the Gate. And that was uh, a small problem. So the way a small problem went, it actually took place after Test Your Metal, which is the novella I wrote, and they came out in reverse. So the first thing that came out was a small problem, which took place after Test Your Metal. And then so those two came out, and then I wrote Hesitation. Look, I got props too. <laughs> and then which uh, introduces the backstory for the majority of uh, – the call story and his history and his, his, his race's history. So they're from Shangal, uh, the Shangal system, the planet Shane, and, uh, they are a race of bipedal dragons. They have wings. Um, they're big. The call is eight and a half feet tall. Uh, he probably weighs 1500 pounds if you want to do the math. Um, and he is the first born son of the emperor. He's the first heir. So in order to take the throne, you have two choices. When it's time for you to step up and be the leader, A, you can go on what's known as a journey of succession where you leave their system, which is closed by their own accord, um, into the rest of the galaxy, and you earn your right to rule by learning to follow first. And you find out what's out there, and it, it, it just gives you the experience needed to be the leader of an entire system. You can't just be raised in a palace and then oh i know everything and i can run this place it don't work that way and uh so he goes out well the other way option two is the battle of ascension which is basically a, a death match you challenge your father or your uncle whoever's on the throne and the last one standing is emperor um so you know it just goes through that and how he chooses you know the more honorable path and he goes out into the system and and uh you know but in the novel in that in the novel you, you find out his brother has other ideas you know he, he doesn't particularly have the same values as decal does and uh his his name's gortal but from there you know he meets ryan uh him and ryan his human friend who's actually from earth uh i don't know if any of you any of you guys have somebody actually from earth yet i don't know if i'm the only one who did that or not um but ryan is actually from earth so you'll get a few references from earth and you'll get you know uh pop culture here and there but just just enough to to relate um <laughs> and then i have action which is the uh the continuation obviously of hesitation so their story continues in that and the call finds out what's going on back home he meets up with his sister and stuff like that um and it's you know it's just a, a long story that i wrote and was originally supposed to be finished in one book but it's turned into three so the third book is consequences and it's coming as soon as i can get it done and then i'm also working with uh hillbilly over there on uh another book for salvage Shadow universe it'll come slowly but surely where's my chapter at man I'm working on it, man. <laughs> you know how many Months. projects I got going on right now? Months. Hey, you know, Wood still owes me a Fallen World story chapter, and well, the the next chapter for Smuggler's Quest, which is a follow up of this. Which we all got a stack my, of things. You'll have to excuse my rambling. I'm not good at this thing. <laughs> <laughs> Just takes time. 
<laughs> well, it's it's kind of like, you know, we usually say welcome to CKP. It's like welcome to Salvage Title Universe because I, I wrote the one book and then Kevin said, oh, I want a trilogy, by the way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, oh, uh, okay. <laughs> hey, trilogy sale, I'm man. Sure he wants, I'm not sure he wanted a trilogy on the smugglers, but I told him he was going to get one. <laughs> 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 All right, let's uh, let's see. Uh, Ian, you want to talk a little bit about, about your story and what else you've written? Yeah, man. Well, I mean, before I do that, I I want to throw down the gauntlet on my my guys over here, <laughs> Bill Roberts and Chris Woods, trying to lay down the the claim on '80s references. I wrote an entire freaking novel that was a giant homage to Miami Vice. So put it in your pipe and smoke it, boys. All right. You want, you want to bring that? You want to bring that picture to me? Bring that picture to me. All right. So that's all I got to say about that. If we're gonna throw down on eighties references, I, I want, don't want some of that man. action. I, I file for the. I file for the record, man. I got you on that one. Go look at the cover for Detroit City Vice, son, and then you come talk to me. We'll have a conversation. <laughs> <laughs> this is what happens when authors get together. It really is, man. And God help you if this happens at the bar over drinks at Fantasy. Um, that's, awesome. that's, that's the, the amazement of going to these conventions and getting together because that's when story ideas happen. Absolutely. Oh, and that is not an overstatement at all. No. It um, so yeah, Salvage Title Universe. Uh, I got plugged into this, you know, pretty much from the get go. Speaking of Fantasy, that was a couple of years ago. That was the first place where Kevin and I had a chance to to sit around over coffees and kind of get to know each other a little bit and and uh, and and chit chat. We were, you know, for all intents and purposes, the two only rednecks at the con, and so that made us fast friends, which is always nice. I, I wasn't lonely. Um, so that was cool. But, uh, you know, but he, he had just put out, I think it was Salvage Title and Salvage Fleet. Please. I don't know if System was out at the time yet or not. I believe the first two were, though. Um, yeah. And he mentioned that he was talking about turning that into a shared universe and, you know, that he had read some of my stuff and was interested in, in bringing me on board. So naturally, I mean, the minute the, the first ones hit audio and I could check them out, I, I was in it. And I loved it from the get-go, man. I mean, it was so... Salvage was so eerily reminiscent of all of the fun stuff that I loved about Star Wars and just the the, the blast rock and roll sci-fi, if you will, from the 1980s, the last Starfighters and, and whatnot. It was so full of color and energy and action, and the characters were a blast to get to know, and there was loads of humor, and it was just – it was classic escapism sci-fi. And so the minute I got a dose of that, I was like, oh, hell to the yeah, I'm, I'm on this with bells. <laughs> Um, so, so yeah, so I threw in with, uh, with the first anthology with a sh uh, short story called Akala Nights, which, um, is set on a planet called Akala and follows a, a group of Tretreans about a hundred years after the fact who defected, um, and went and started their own planet. You know, they were, they were kind of tired of being pushed around. They were, they were the dregs of society on Tretra, which isn't hard to, you know, isn't hard to be if you know anything about that planet. And uh, the minute the Bith found a, a, a new world that would suit them and establish a Stargate there, they said, peace out. We're done being kicked around. We want to go someplace where we can control our own destiny and where, you know, our livelihoods and our destinies can be what we can make of it. So hard work, grit, and determination. We want some results for that. And we're sure as heck not getting it here on Traitra. So we're out. Peace. And so begins Akala. And my story is set about 100 years after that world was settled. It has since become a, a very popular place for people to hang out. Um, I would say as an aside, for anybody who knows anything about the Emerald Coast, you will probably see a couple of names bannered about in there that might resonate with you. You know, rings of bells, inspirations and all that. I'm from Florida. Um, but yeah, you know, so that was that was very much what Akala Knights was about. Was it focused on uh, a, a, an Akala freighter captain? who had worked his way, you know, scrapping with everybody else to just try and make ends meet and finally saved enough to be able to buy his own ship. And lo and behold, he got a Trey Trey and girl to fall in love with him and he married her. And she left behind wealth and fortune and prestige and all of that to marry him because uh -huh. she wanted to strike out and build a life with him. And so their story is that, you know, they run a freighter together, they've built a business together and they take on a job that they walk into it knowing, okay, there's, there's probably going to be some surprises in here, but we can handle it. All right. We can handle it because it's big money and we need this, this payday to be able to stay afloat. And so they, they grudgingly take it and the surprises become way more than they ever could have possibly fathomed. 
so that was, you know, kind of my first foray into salvage. I then wrote um, a short in the second anthology, uh, which was called Akala Reckoning, set on the same planet around another guy uh, <coughs> who was a uh, descendant of a Tretrayan family. And he made his mark in the world of Warball and was a superstar. You know, if you follow college football, this guy would have been a five-star elite 11 athlete. Like this was the guy that everybody wanted. And he followed that all the way up through until he would have been the number one overall pick in the war ball draft. And then his career ended because of concussions, because nobody messes with the brain. And it doesn't matter how far you get into the future. Medical science can only do so much to cure the human brain. And so he was out and he got left trying to, to, to find a new life and a new way. And it sure as hell wasn't going back to Tretra. And so he settles on Akala and spends everything he's got to buy a fishing boat. And he goes fishing and he gets taken off on a job. And by the end of that story, you find out that he is somebody that even he doesn't know he is. So uh, anyway, that's kind of my foray into it. Uh, there, there may or may not be another Akala short story floating around out there. <clears throat> Uh, it, I'm sure we'll see the light of day at some point and, uh, okay. we'll, we'll have some, some fun with that too, but that's kind of my contribution to, to the salvage title universe is the planet Akala, the people there, the history of where they came from and what they are as they relate to Traitra and, uh, the fact that they're a world of fighters, man. And I tell these cute little vignette stories that, uh, just kind of flesh that out and it's been a blast so far. Right. right. Quincy, you want to tell us a little bit about, about your story there? Came out oh, yeah. Um, so the, the you roped me in, I think it was at Liberty Con or shortly thereafter, like a couple right. years ago. Yes. Um, and you talked about the, the the universe. And I was like, you know, I, I love working in all the, the Chris Kennedy properties. I'm, I'm in a, most of them, I think, in one form or another. Uh, and I really like the idea. And I'd come up with this notion of sort of crossing sci-fi fantasy, which Star Wars is, with Dragon Ken. And professional athletes, so it's I mean it's it's kind of a recurring theme in here, um, and I wanted to do something that had this notion of the the, the Vorwald. It's the name of the race, and the first story was called Vorwald Dishonor, and it's about this professional sports team and the three siblings who were <clears throat> who were in charge of it. Uh, particularly, the there's a young female, and she's the the leader of the the whole bit group. Um, she's informed that uh, her third brother her and her two brothers actually play the sports team her third brother actually has committed an atrocity on another world and she's been tasked by her father to go uh regain their honor uh and so what happens is there's this transition from the you know this really cool i thought uh professional well sports team that involves armor and swords and lances and these, so I, does anybody remember, um, it, it goes way back, so I'll date myself here and probably a few others, uh, the original, uh, was it uh, Gamma World game box cover? I don't know if you remember. Anyway, it showed this guy in powered armor sitting on top of pretty much an armored Wolverine. Um, and that, that, uh, that image has stuck with me all these years. I wanted to kind of do, that was the inspiration. So these dragon can actually ride giant sort of lizards, they're dragons. Um, and, and the sport is based with those animals. And what happens is essentially, uh, it, it turns out that they've got a gift for open combat. And so I'm hoping I'm, I will be writing a novel once I get past a couple of projects based with these three characters, um, where essentially they've become a mercenary company. By the end of the story, they have a ship of their own now. This mercenary more in their four walls the beginning becoming a mercenary company and it's their first stop but the plan is to actually have them leave their home system which the Vorwald don't normally do it's rare and end up they're going to end up i believe and we got i got to talk to kevin about this but they end up in the salvage title system the salvage system um and basically hang their their uh sign up to be mercenaries uh, so that that's the plan. I just have to get there. I'm working on a thing with a, a couple of other authors. I've got uh, fantasy with Mark Adelheit. I've got a, a 4HU with um, uh, Kevin Eikenberry. And then I'm working on a super secret project with some folks that are also end up coming out of the uh, CKP house. So that's that's been occupying a lot of my time. All right. Briscoe, the other woods brother. 
Yes, sir. Uh, let's talk about your your story. Uh, first of all, it's good seeing you guys. I don't. I've not physically met any of y'all except Chris, my brother. It's kind of hard to have another brother and not meet him. Um, <laughs> and and kind of like Nick, I, I wrote my, stories uh, about that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, I wrote my novella before I wrote the short story, and and what happened was I was uh, I was writing in Chris's world in the fallen fallen world. And almost through a novel, and I, I got stuck, and I wanted to write something different. So I decided to write something in science fiction, which I had not done. And I wrote this short story. I sent it to Chris to read, and he's like, you know what? Uh, this guy named Kevin Steverson, he's got this world. And I said, yeah, I've read those already, the three. And he's, Chris said, well, he's having an uh, anthology he's putting out. Let me send this to him and see if he likes it. So he sent it to Kevin. Kevin got back to me and said, hey, can you make that a little bit bigger? You make that into 12,000, 15,000 words, and we'll put it in a novella anthology I've got coming out. So I did that and went back. Uh, Bravo Whiskey Corps is the name of it. Um, it. You know, all of that stuff just came from cobwebs in my head. Bravo Whiskey, when I was in the Air Force uh, command post, everything we did, we wrote down and made a note and had to use our initials. Well, my initials are BW. So I, that just came to me. I'm like, well, I want to do something with Bravo Whiskey. And and I did. Uh, Brandon Woodford, I'm not a huge bourbon fan, but Woodford Reserves is supposedly a really good bourbon. I had just bought a bottle for a friend of mine and that kind of stuff. So that's where his name came from. Uh, wanted to write something in science fiction, mercenaries, uh, that sort of thing. And, and that's where Bravo Whiskey Four came from. It was fun to write. Um, I thought I wanted to write something along the same lines as, as Kevin's stuff. It's really, it's feel good stuff. You know, it's fun to read. And, uh, and that's what I wanted to write. And uh, so that's what I tried to do. Uh, my next one in Through the Gate, I can't remember the name of the book that I uh, grabbed that title from, but my title is Recruit, Crewman, Captain, Spy. So some of you guys who, who read a lot maybe recognize that from uh, a guy from back in the 60s that used to write a lot of spy novels, and I've read those. I just can't remember. Tinker Taylor Soldier Spy? Yeah, that's it. Tinker Taylor yeah. Soldier Spy. Uh, I had just started reading that and I, you know i thought well that's really cool and this idea that i came up with well this guy's going to be a spy inside of bravo whiskey court and he is he's gone to uh he's put in there to see if they are truly um just what they seem as a mercenary crew or are they trying to grow and maybe take over some systems and and you know, get bigger in a nefarious way. And uh, he becomes part of the team in the end. So it's it's kind of cool. I enjoyed that too. I enjoyed, really enjoyed writing that one. And, and thank you, Kevin, for letting me be a part of that. Uh, got another one that's, that's coming out in one of the anthologies this summer. Uh, I'm almost done with that. I'm done writing it. I just have to do a little tweaking on it. That was originally the first chapter in a novel that I'm going to be writing that is also part of the Bravo Whiskey group there. And um, these folks, uh, these folks are on the water world and it just tells their story of getting off of that world. And then the novel will pick up with them coming back uh, 20 years later or something like that. So, yeah, it's uh, it's it's a lot of stuff and it's fun and I enjoy it. And I think you guys really may be a part of it. Um, you, you've heard him reference Ian reference that he just did about some short stories coming out in the summer. And since this will air later, um, it'll actually air after fantasy. Go ahead and talk about it. Going to have two anthologies coming up. They're going to be released back to back. I don't know that anybody's ever done that. You no know, back to back releases on anthologies. People do it with series. Um, it's going to be, um, it takes all kinds, volume one, and then it takes all kinds, volumes two. And, you know, it'll deal with aliens and the different races in the universe, because there are thousands of races uh, in the salvage universe, um, obviously. And that's just in our galaxy alone, you know. Uh, there are plans to go into the other galaxies, and that's going to happen, you know, because the universe itself is huge, but that's just our galaxy alone. And, if, you know, in the real world, real science, there are billions of stars in our galaxy. So, 
there are billions of planets. And, you know, some people say, oh, there's life, there's not life, you know, the whole argument. Listen, if you just want to do the math, the odds are there are several, several planets <laughs> with an atmosphere just like Earth. And that's just doing math. Mm -hmm. You know, when you start dealing with billions and trillions of numbers, yeah, there's, there's plenty of planets in the golden zone. So, or it's an awful waste of space. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Oh, you froze. I thought he was just thinking. <laughs> he's not a cause. He's, and he's holding on to that happy Very moment. Very thoughtful. <laughs> he looks constipated. <laughs> <laughs> Are you constipated, Kevin? You can't do that, man. <laughs> How's that old age creeping up on you? <laughs> he's not that old. Friends are good. I'm talking about Woods. Oh, wait. Woods. The the Russians, one the Russians are attacking our video face. feed. I'm not saying it's aliens, but it's aliens. But it's aliens. <laughs> oh, no, there it goes. Now it's doing a little. Circling there. We're back. Right. It just oh, froze up. I don't know what happened. Bingo. Bingo. Yeah. Who knows what Do happened? Do you there. want to uh, give a plug for David since he was here and his network dropped out? Yeah, I can. Um, we had we had David on. Um, I'm not sure what happened there. David Jones has wrote a, a novel in Savage Universe. Russians. And he's got he's he's continuing the second one in that series. And he and I had talked uh, a while back. You know, there are only two uh, actual AIs in the Salvage universe. And that's uh, Janine and then her, her uh, the computer they built, him and her and Clint built, Farouk. Um, but one of the ways, and if you read it, one of the ways they became AIs when they were traveling to all the realities, when, when something or someone reached out to them and it started a little program. Um, so with David's, you know, he, there, there was actual an AI race that was that was working with humans and blending with humans and you know you have to read the book to find out what happened um but they but they're no longer there they're no longer with us and part of that is the whole overall plan for once they leave the galaxy and there'll be more on that later but his book is really good um it has to do with humans that didn't know they were supposed to be anything other than slaves to another race because like i said it's eight thousand years in the future they know no different and the AI is embedded in one of them and talking to them just a little bit because it's, you know, it's not much of its conscience there. But even though humans aren't supposed to be slaves, this is not how it's supposed to be. So if you hadn't had a chance, you might want to take a look at his book. But I don't know how far I got a while ago on talking about the anthologies coming out. Um, but there will be some more anthologies coming. It's a back-to-back -back release, a rapid release. Um, those are turning in to the publisher in the summer. And so we'll see what, what ups and data gives us. I believe it's going to be sometime in the fall. Wow. Well, uh, yeah, and then there'll be opportunities for right <laughs> There are other novels coming. There'll be more novels. I think eight are being written right now, if I have the number right. Oh, right on. Right. Yeah, that'll put us right around 20 uh, novels in the right universe. There, so it's yeah. growing. Well, I intend to expand the Truth Moon story, and uh, we're doing more smugglers right yeah the smugglers quest and then eventually we're going to be doing uh smugglers um what did we name that one i don't remember something what the last else. one was <laughs> smugglers, <laughs> smugglers paycheck or something i don't remember smugglers underpants <laughs> uh, yeah it's funny after i wrote uh after i wrote scales i got and, and i thought i included in there fairly well how they controlled the ships but apparently a lot of people didn't get it. So I've gone into even more detail. I mean, I think I spent half a page just on how the control scheme works, how the Zephyrus actually is. control the ships. Right. And how they were built. Yeah, and it makes it makes perfect sense. You know, I've, I've read the next book, so I kind of get that privilege. I read every word that comes in salvage <laughs> before it heads to the publisher. Um, and, I, and I'll continue to do that. It doesn't matter if it's three years from now or 50 books. I'll, I'll read every word. So um, that comes in. But yeah, it's really good. It's a good book, yeah. 
I had a good time with it. Yeah. The next one should be uh, even more fun. Right. Because you know what's coming. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> um, but, you know, most, most of it's like we all have many projects going on. I have several that's going on, too. So um, the Savage books are coming. More books are coming for you fans out there, for you readers. Oh, yeah. Um, so if you haven't had a chance to get into it, there's 12 books now. Go ahead and jump on it and start reading. It's a good time okay, to get started. Get because there's there's more coming. <laughs> be a and, then, uh, and when the movies come out, you guys can say, you know, I was already reading this. You know, so... <laughs> We, we got any ETA on the movies? We don't. Uh, you know, those things can take time. Um, but it is in, in pre-production with, with the script being done. So, you know, and it goes from there. Um, Wait, is it on IMDb yet? Uh, just just the name and stuff like that. Uh, when the uh, when the announcement came out, it went worldwide. And so, of course, I screenshotted a lot of those. But, you know, when it when it went viral and, and the article was written in Japanese, of course, I can't read that. You know, in, in Spain and Thailand, everywhere. It went literally, it went worldwide. The article was translated and it just went everywhere. It went crazy. Um, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm old. So when it hit Yahoo Entertainment, I thought it was pretty big. <laughs> <laughs> I get that. I get but, that. Uh, yeah. yeah. So, <laughs> but I mean, you know, it's, it's, it was a big deal when it went through Hollywood and everywhere else. So. See, see what happens. It's still cool. Yeah. Um, and I and I know you know a lot of people have asked me this. You know, do you have any input on the script? What's the script? Like? I tell the story. I write the books. Um, writing a script is a whole another art form. Yeah, that's. And and I know enough to stay in my lane. You know, um, unless you're, you know, Stephen King or, or J.K. Rowling or, or a few of those Patterson, maybe some of those people like that. The script is something they do. That's their side of the house. You don't have any say in that um, until you, you know, have had some more works out and that kind of thing. It just it doesn't happen. And if, if any of you are authors or, you know, one day you're looking to get your books in the movies or, or you know, pitching and finding an agent and that kind of thing, something you might want to think about, you can't step into the negotiations with demands like that. You know, I want to have a say in the script. This is my baby. Okay. That'll end the negotiation. Yeah, that's, that's, nine more books. that's nine more books in the top ten they can talk to. And that's what will happen. Yep. So, yeah. And I, I knew that going in, um, having been in you know the entertainment industry as far as music and videos and all that kind of thing. So I was like, hey, I just tell the story. Everything else is your lane, not mine. Can so, I just can I just add how refreshing it'll be to see something different on the screen? It's so nice to see new franchises, new you know new series getting a shot to be brought to whether it's streaming or whether it's the silver screen, just new content that is not the age old formulaic stuff. That you mean you don't want out. another Spider-Man or Hulk? Jeez, my knees for crap's sake, <laughs> man. Or what about another Good Batman Lord. where they retell it all over again? Oh my again? God. No. You, uh... How many times do we have to see uncle Ben get shot? I mean, good Lord, that poor guy. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> but no, but seriously, jokes jokes aside, it is so refreshing to know that there's stuff out there. Because listen, I love, you know, anybody who listens to my podcast, you know, I love, you know, science fiction television shows and movies. And it's great. And I feel like it's been forever since we've gotten anything fresh and new. And knowing what salvage is and knowing how much fun that can be. And frankly, knowing how much we as a society just really need fun stuff to make a smile right now. Yeah, it's great to know that this is on tap and this is on the way. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, really, that's one of the great things, um, you know, for me, and, and I'd probably safely say for for many of us, writing for Chris Kennedy Publishing. I mean, I, I was, you know, like like Kevin, I had never written anything before I wrote for Chris, and I pitched him an idea in a text or in a Facebook message, actually, and I pitched it as a short story, and he said, "Well, why don't you write it a book?" <laughs> so, <laughs> thus began my journey as a professional author. So, right. Yeah, it's kind of the same way with me. I hadn't done anything. Like I said earlier, I hadn't written anything in 15 years since I got out of high school when I when I wrote Test Your Metal. And, you kids you know, I, today. I told, uh, <laughs> hey, <laughs> jump in with both feet, right? So I told, That's what uh, I, did. I, I told, I told my dad, I said, hey, if it's trash, tell me if it's trash. Don't, I don't want any favors, and I haven't gotten any. I get, I get ridden probably harder 
because of it, and I'm glad for it. But it wouldn't have yeah. asked Chris if it were trash. Yeah, yeah, that's what I, I'm saying. I, I, yeah, I don't play favorites with all my kids. So. But you know, I still, you know, I got that chance, you know, because of Chris Kennedy Publishing, and I'm ever grateful for it. Yeah, I can't play favorites like that. So, <laughs> and do that. Got six kids, and God, eleven grandkids now. So it's you know, <laughs> I feel it. <laughs> And well, you should. We're we're setting right at fifty minutes, so probably time to go around and do a closeout. All right. Hey, yeah, you wanna? Uh, I frozen up. He froze. No, he's no, frozen. You're still there. You both Who, freeze. I'm froze. Who's yeah. froze? There you go. Elsa's froze. Don't do it. <laughs> yeah, no, I have no. an eight-year-old. Shut up, Nick. I have an eight-year-old. Don't do it. <laughs> I'm begging you. <laughs> All right. Just let it. Hey, how do you, 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 you want to close it out? How do you normally close one out? You guys done this a lot more. Uh, than I have. Go around. Tell uh, tell where around. you can find your stuff. Yeah. Um, any a quick little blurb of any projects you got coming up, Latest and work. you know, move to the next guy. All right. Um, what we'll do is we'll. Uh, before we wind wind this thing up and uh, close it down, we're going to talk to everybody to see what they got going on, what works they have. Uh, we'll start right there with uh, William Joseph Roberts. Hibbley, what you got going on? <laughs> uh, what don't I have going on? Um, I'm the head of Three Ravens Publishing. We've got the Starflight Anthology going on. I've got the team from the Trailer Park Anthology. Oh, let's see. I've got uh, the Last Brigade Anthology just came out, uh, Standing Fast, which you're a part of. Um, I got, uh, oh, I'm in the next salvage universe anthology as soon as I can write my story. And then the, the, uh, next Liberty or give me Liberty con anthology coming up this year. Um, plus I've got my Starflight novel. I've got another flux runners to knock out this year. And I've got two other series that I'm kicking off over at three Ravens. Nice. Oh, and Woods. more salvage and, uh, dogs of war for the, uh, um, fallen world universe. I'm busy, dude. Can I just say, Flux, Flux Runners? That is one sweet cover, man. I saw that roll over when you released it. That is a sweet looking cover. <laughs> Thanks, man. Uh, yep. unfortunately, my artist passed away last August and he oh. Oh, had that just sucks. barely, yeah, he, he had barely finished the cover for Flux Runners, too. Um, I might be able to use it for the next cover, I don't know yet. Mm. Hate to hear that. Chris Woods, what do you got happen? Well, I've got uh, I'm in the anthology that you're uh, the first of the anthologies of the two back backs. I'm in the Starflight anthology with uh, Scott and uh, or William, whatever you call Hillbilly. I call. Well, I'm not going to tell you what I call him because you want this to be family friendly. So. Uh, <laughs> What's wrong, you little game? buddy? You just jealous? Hey, yeah. look, look, hey, you just jealous of this little buddy? He'll, he'll be a great man. Uh, we got a little project called Onward Liberty Con, which is a second uh, anthology after Give Me Liberty Con, which was a charity anthology for Liberty Con, which uh, a couple of you guys are in, hopefully. <laughs> I've got uh, all I got to do is see some contracts. Where's my contracts? I just got it today. <laughs> I know. You should you should be already having it back and everything. <laughs> <laughs> There's two choices, and I, I guess I got to clear for you. I said I know uh, everybody uh, acting funny. Now you funny too. <laughs> <laughs> That's, That's a great song. reference too. That's a great song. I've got the, uh, See the Trader's Moon story that I did in your uh, in the first anthology. I have uh, I've think I'm probably going to get to that this year to expand it, and then the second Smuggler's book, working on some more Fallen World, and uh, hopefully another Soul Guard book before my fans draw and quarter me. I've got some sniper down in Georgia who's threatening me about it. Mm. Which is kind of scary. So, you know, I'm probably going to have to do that one this year. <laughs> yeah, I'm waiting on it, too. <laughs> if you uh, 
if you want to find out about my books or see anything that I've got, it's under the professional liar.com and you can find all my stuff there. All right. Alex, what you got going on? Oh, let's see. Um, coming July 16th, as we said, uh, shedding the past, the next, uh, Serpentis book in salvage style universe. Um, last year, I think it was September. I released the first book in my own universe. Yeah, I've got props too. uh, seeds of Terra. Uh, started the new universe I'm writing called Terran Space Project. Um, I'm currently writing book two of the Terran Space Project. I'm flowing a little bit through that pretty well. Um, after that, I think it will probably, by popular demand, be another Mr. Smith novel for the Fallen World universe. Uh, I've gotten more than a few requests for that, so I'll be talking to Mr. Woods over there, make sure I'm up on what's going on in the universe and Make sure we get everything going for that so we'll get smith moving in a certain direction um if you want to check out uh, me and my stuff you can go to alexrathauthor.com uh, i've got an email newsletter i send out once a month uh, a little bit about me a little bit about what's going on games i play in my spare time and i always try to include at least one little tidbit of fact on things i've researched for the books because we all do a lot of research some of which gets us on fbi watch lists watch. <laughs> most of us uh, um, but I include little factoids in there, the things I found when researching that it kind of surprised me. Okay. Ian? Yeah, I, I have props too, but sadly my internet service provider who shall not be named here sucks the giant banana. So, uh, so I cannot show them to you. However, if you would like to see said props, just go to ianjmalone.net. <laughs> and, uh, all of my books are there covers included. Um, as far as stuff I got going on, uh, I just wrapped a short story for the one of the anthologies that Kevin just mentioned. Uh, it takes all kinds. A uh, little hint to those who read my my first one, Akala Knights. We're going to go back to that crew of characters, and we're going to take the Rioli, who kind of got them all into the mess. Uh, that was a species that I created especially for the Salvage Child of the Universe. Um, you're gonna you're gonna see Tenza again, and Tenza is a very different guy than he was in a Akala Knights. A lot has happened, and he's a very, very, very different guy for it. So uh, anyway, as, as is you know the case in Salvage, it all kind of weaves together. So I hope you guys like that. Um, I also have a brand new novel, which will be out by the time this drops with Chris Kennedy um, in the 4HU called The Street Survivors. It is a follow-up to my 4HU novel, first novel in the 4HU, Freebird Rising, out from a couple of years ago. Um, it is also the latest installment in the Guild Wars. So for people who have followed the kind of the main line of what's happening in the 4HU, this is going to hit on some stuff that you're going to want to know about. Um, if you haven't had a chance to go back and read Freebird Rising, check that out. I hope you like it. Um, after that, I've got another 4HU novel to knock out with Chris. Uh, that has kind of been announced that we're going to do a follow-up to Street Survivors together. So that's in the queue. And then who knows beyond that? It's anybody's guess. Uh, and then by and by, I also do a podcast with our host here mr kevin steverson the dudes in hyperspace podcast and uh we talk all things sci-fi literature and then we spend half the show talking about sports barbecue and beer which is you know never a bad way to pass the time so uh so that's me and you guys come find me again ianjmalone.net i'm on facebook and twitter come hang out let's wrap all righty nick what are, you, what are you working on right now um my big project right now is consequences which is the third uh book in my little uh storyline with DeCall and Ryan. Uh, that'll end that story, but they'll be back later on. Uh, after that, I've got to write the salvaged uh, short story for uh, the anthology in July. And I'm working on, like I said earlier, I got a book writing with uh, Hillbilly up there. It's also a salvage title. Tentatively, we've named it uh, The Unwanted right now. I don't know if we're going to keep that. Um, it's work in progress. Um, I just wrote and turned in a short story for the Starflight universe with uh, Hillbilly up there, and uh, I've been told to go ahead and continue that, so I'll be working on that as well. Um, <laughs> then I'm writing a fantasy short. It's a submission. I'll be turning that in in August, and I hope by the end of this year to have started my own universe. Uh, I'm not going to talk about the details of that right now, but uh, it is in the works, and it it can be a trilogy and more. It, it's going to be quite large, as 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 I've had it planned right now. 
And then you can find me at uh, nicksteverson.com and I'm on Facebook and MeWe and Instagram and Twitter. All right. Quincy? It almost, it almost sounds like the bug bit him. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, you're right. It does. He's got a bed. Don't see a doctor. Uh, so I'm working on about four different things actively right now. Um, I just had a book call come out, co-authored with Mark Allen Adelheit in his universe. That's the one non-CKP thing I'm working on. Um, that so he has a series. It's Roman Legion. That's also the Roman Legion in a fantasy setting. Uh, I worked with him and we created a dwarven character that is then kind of it's a coming of age story. So I have to finish book three. That's my first priority. Meanwhile, uh, so sort of actively working on finishing up the or while well, writing the sequel to Enforcer with Kevin Eikenberry, which is called Scourge. Um, and that there's going to be some neat twists and turns in that. I am actually actively working with Jamie Ibsen, who you've probably read some of his stuff. He's, he's done a bunch in here. Uh, he's creating a, well, so we, two of our short stories that go back to We Dare, um, they were really compatible. And so what we've been doing is we spent the past year sort of blending these two stories, those two short stories, into what are going to be two novels. I was literally just reading his finished, uh, his manuscript, and getting uh, dev edits back to him. And in reading through it, I'm stoked. Uh, once I, I mean, when his come out, comes out, I think y'all are going to love it. When mine comes out as the companion book to this, they really are going to work very well together. So I'm stoked about that. I owe Kevin, obviously, a short story for... Um, salvage that's going to feature the Vorwall again. Um, and that the working title right now is The Good, the Bad, and the Blue. Uh, and so it's going to be the little alien helps the Vorwall. And then once I'm done with all of that, uh, the plan is to actually start working on the Vorwall novel and one other. So I'm trying to do it like two things at once and keep me from getting bored because ADHD. <laughs> Always lots of words to have uh, on the page. No, no, none of us have ADHD. I don't know what you're talking about. Oh, and you can find me at quincyjallen.com. There in Facebook. All right. Briscoe, what are, what are you what are you working on side selling a stack of houses? Man. Uh, when real estate lets me, uh, I've got a Starflight short story with Hillbilly that's, that's already turned in. So when that comes out, um, the short story with Kevin is called bluer sea or greener seas and bluer skies and that one is just that close to being done so i'll get that to you shortly i've got a novel in uh the brother chris's uh fallen world that that i'm working on and hope to have it done within the next couple of months uh i've got a short story already written in that world that's waiting for an anthology to happen um yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, it's it's really not a hint. No I've been yelling at him about that for months. So uh, that's that's what I've got going on right now, and I'm sure some other stuff will appear before too long. All right. Um, all my stuff can be found at kevinsteverson.com. Um, I am writing right now a book called Salvage Mother with Casey Ezel. Those of you that know her know her work. She writes for some KB. And she does some stuff with Bane. Um, so we're we're more than 50% done with that novel, more like three quarters. So that'll get turned into be coming out. Um, I had a book came out, I guess about a month and a half ago, right at two months. Um, and it was a Four Horsemen book with Kevin Ikeberry and that was Redacted Vice, followed Redacted Affairs. Um, that's done pretty well, stayed pretty high up on the charts there. So doing well. Um, I have the short stories I need to, to do for Chris uh, Woods for the Liberty Con. That's coming up. I got to get the contract back to him. I just got that. So uh, that's for that. Um, I guess that book is is um, donations. It, I guess all the proceeds be donated to the cause. So I have to do right in that. Um, I owe Chris Woods, you know, and I've talked about it before. If I can ever get my name scheduled straight, I'd like to write King of the Mountain book for him in the fallen world. <laughs> Well, we'd like to see it. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think that's sort of the story I wrote with that. I think it's got plenty of room for and plenty of potential, so I need to do that. I was well, just up hurry and up because I'm already taking over all Appalachia, man. You better hurry up and get in there. 
You ain't gonna take, you ain't gonna take over the Kingdom Mountains territory. I promise. You. Yeah, be careful. Smith is heading south. Uh, y'all wanna stay out there? Y'all wanna stay away from Helen, Georgia, that whole area? Wait, Smith is He's out west. To no. no, Smith was in Toronto. Oh, yeah. Toronto? I was thinking he was out not, in Seattle. That's not west. Who who is out in Seattle? <laughs> Depends which way you're. Oh no! Wait, you, the, the specific show gun was out west. That's Ipsen okay. stuff. Yeah. So I got that going on. I'm going to be writing this with Tyler Ackerman, writing the third uh, fantasy book. You know, our, our second fantasy book, Accepted, came out. It followed Burt. And so we're going to finish up that trilogy um, and we can get started on that too this summer. Uh, just got a lot going on, a lot of short stories. Some I've turned in, some I owe. Um, just staying busy. Um, on the music side of the house, I you know, wrote, wrote a song with Tyler just the other day. We went back and forth on one, so we'll see if that hits any albums or anything. I've had six cuts so far in the music industry, so we'll see. That's uh, you get more nose in the music industry than you do in the dang writing world. I'll tell you, you write two hundred songs, and you might get one cut if you're lucky. Just the way it goes, a lot of nose. So when I, you know, when I went into the writing, and, and I tell you, I, you know, first book I had, I got a yes on. And a lot of that is because I researched what publisher I wanted to send it to. And I looked at a bunch of different publishers, indie, small, big, large, all that, and knew who would who would publish the type of thing that I wanted to write. And some of that I learned in the music industry, you know, getting told no so many times. So it's not as as much as a unicorn as, as it seems to be. I did do my research. Um, so, uh, but, that, you know, that's just the music world. They do a lot of that. No, no, no. Um, that's another thing I want to talk about real quick about the, about the publishing industry and, and writers and authors. You know, we push everybody's work. Typically comes out with something. I'm going to share it. I'm going to push it. I'm going to talk about it. Alex, Rich Go, Quincy, everybody. Music world, a lot of times they won't do that. For some reason, they got that mentality that these are my fans and they're not listening to anybody else, which I don't understand, but it's cutthroat music. Yeah, they don't. Well, uh, you know, I, I tell, I don't know how many people I've told this to. We're not fighting for the readers. What um, takes us three months to create? They write or they read in three days. There's right. no competition. I mean, if, if somebody thinks that the other guy is a competition, they got their nose stuck up in the air, they're not worth your time a freaking day. No. no. I mean, the community I, I, I that we've it. got here, especially through Liberty yeah. Con, oh, yeah. my God, man. Yeah. And the networking I mean, and connection. I, I was at a convention just last weekend, and I sat after hours with um, authors and publishers from three different houses. Uh, one of them was Bain, and then uh, I, I sat around with John Hardness from Falstaff um, and some other folks. I mean, that's the thing I love about it, you know, especially getting back to conventions, which, you know, I'm sure hopefully the Con will be in person with you uh, next year. We'll be able to you know, get out there shaking hands and smiling in front of people again. Right. Um, but, you know, it's and that's one of the things we love. Um, I mean, I can only really speak for myself, but I think I can safely say this for everybody here. We love getting out and meeting the people that read what we write. Right. Because oh, we yeah. pour blood, Came sweat, into tears into this. Came and into you, I don't care if you spend $5 on the Kindle version or you have Kindle Unlimited or you actually buy a paperback. I don't care. You put your valuable time into reading the words that we write. And that's the biggest compliment we could get. But okay. Getting Absolutely. the invocation of an emotion, you know, that that to me is like above and beyond anything else I could ever hope for. If somebody's crying or they're getting pissed off with the characters, yes, I did my job yep. right. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and a lot of people came out to me after they finished Seeds of Terror, which I will admit leaves off on a really blistering cliffhanger. <laughs> and a lot of people were just pissed at me for that. I said, yeah, but you'll read the next one, won't you? They'll be like, yeah, when's it coming out? Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah you, you, you want to invoke those emotions. Um, I don't necessarily do that so much in Salvador Salvador is more as the humor, that kind of thing, but you know, I've written some short stories for the for the Four Horsemen in that last uh, Peacemaker anthology story called Last, and I can't tell you how many people messaged me after that you know, because it, it tore them apart. You know, on those things. Sometimes, and as writers, sometimes when we write something, it bothers us to write it. And we have yeah. to step up, we stand up and walk away from our desk, our computer, because holy crap, you know? Oh, yeah. No, no, yeah, you, you do. Well, I've made man, myself been scenes, down there have been scenes I've written 
there have been scenes I've written I had to get away from the computer, uh, and I just couldn't write anymore that day. Uh, writing Wildcat, there are a few scenes in there that I can't go back and read because I, I can understand method actors like um, you know, um, oh boy that that uh, played Batman that all, uh, overdosed right. or whatever afterward. Um, Heath Ledger, Joker, you mean Heath Ledger? Yeah, Heath Ledger. Heath yeah, Ledger. Joker. You know, he 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 was a method actor, so he, he got, got so into the into mind the space. Yeah. And when I was writing a lot of those scenes in Wildcat, I put myself into that place. And I can't go back and read those because I don't ever want to think about that again. You know? <laughs> All right. Well, we appreciate everybody taking the time to watch this. Uh, wrapping yeah. up the sandwich thing here, here at Liberty Con uh, on our virtual panel. Um, hopefully be opened up next year and we'll see everybody's faces again. I know a lot of the tickets have rolled over and rolled over. Mm-hmm. So uh, we'll, we'll see how it goes. Appreciate you, Hillbilly, for putting this together. Yeah, thanks, man. Yeah. Appreciate no it. Problem, man. It's this is like my thousandth the one this week, uh, something like that. I don't know. Right. I've lost count. There's been so many freaking videos. 